Hi, my name is Rashmi Nowes and I'm a Chief Security Architect at RSA, the Security Division of EMC. So today I'm going to talk about what, top 10 reasons why security risk assessments fail. Um, and they're really simple tips and it's almost um, good practice if you like. So I've kind of broken them down into three areas um, because good security is about people, process and technology. So I'll talk about each of those separately. So let's start with people, the easiest one or sometimes the most difficult one. A lot of risk assessments fail because, uh, simply because um, the staff have inadequate user training. They just simply haven't been train trained to the level that they should be. So staff make either silly mistakes or of course you can have malicious staff who uh, want to try and do some damage. So think about staff training. That's one of the, one of the really easy things um, to do to make sure that you are giving your, your people the right training. The second reason um, is really around security staff themselves, is having inadequate security staff. And we know that there's a huge um, skill shortage in terms of people with the right security skills, um, but we know that everybody's under pressure for budget as well, so you don't have enough of them, um, and you don't really have the right skills. So really think about who you're employing, um, and think about breaking down the roles and responsibilities. Quite often when you have something like a security operations center, everybody's supposed to do everything. So there's no really uh, a clear defined process to say you know, which um, uh, investigations they should follow or which they shouldn't. Um, so everybody runs around doing everything. And of course, if you do that, you're gonna fail. So, um, so that's the kind of um, people aspect of it. So those three um, key areas that I talked about. So um, moving on to process, um, and these are again, um, some of the best practices that you should be doing if you have good security practice. So the first one is patch management. And patch management, you know, everybody talks about, everybody says, yeah, yeah, we do it, we do it. It's probably one of the most difficult things to do and the most difficult things to manage. Um, simply because, you know, people um, either don't want to do it or they think, oh, we'll do it later on, we'll come back and do it later on, or we'll document it later on. So it's not so much not doing the patch management, it's actually documenting what changes you're doing. And of course, if you're not doing that, and if you change a system, uh, you may be in a situation where you're actually opening up a vulnerability in another system, but you don't know that. So it's really important that you have good patch management and you're actually documenting uh, some of that as well. Uh, documenting all of it, in fact, um, for, for future use. The other areas are that you know, you're constantly relying on um, ad hoc processes because you don't really have a clear process, a clear defined process to say what you should do um, in, when you come to a situation like that. Um, so you really need to outline a clear process to say, if this is your patch management policy, then this is the process that you follow um, when it comes to, to incident response. And then the third area is that because you don't have some of these things in place, um, and these all kind of follow on because you know, you're kind of making the problem worse because you're so bad at doing some of the other things. So and the third area is really um, running around um, like headless chickens really, you know, responding to a fire drill all the time because you don't have um, a good enough patch management system, so you've got alerts going around everywhere. You don't have enough staff that have been trained properly to know what you should be investigating. So you really need to make sure um, that you have the, the right tools and the right processes to actually help you focus on the things that you should be investigating. So those, that's some of the um, process element of it. And then the, the, the third area uh, for good security is technology. Um, and of course, technology is not always the answer to all of these things. Um, you know, the, those two, the people and process element is really important. But when it comes to technology, um, a lot of organizations don't have um, a centralized or real-time monitoring system. So um, they actually run around having to log onto multiple consoles to actually find the information they need to, to do an investigation. And obviously that takes time. Um, and not only does it take time, but also because you're going to multiple places, uh, there may be incidents that actually drop between them. So you're actually missing the whole picture. So um, it's really important to have a centralized um, system where you've got everything um, coming back into you. Um, and unfortunately, if you don't have that, that also means that you have poor incident response because you know, you, are you, you're wasting time running around doing all of those things. So that's the second thing when it comes to technology. Um, you know, poor incident response is, is something that we've found a lot when we do risk assessments in, in companies that don't have some of these things that we're talking about. 
Um, and as I said earlier, all, a lot of these things all kind of escalate, um, you know, roll into a, a bigger snowball, if you like. And that, you know, because you don't have a centralized tool, you don't have a, a really good incident response plan, you actually don't have any forensics information. So you actually can't go back and learn about the attacks that you are having or you are seeing because you have no way of being able to um, reconstruct an attack and actually learn from that attack. Um, and because you're not learning, you're still running around um, trying uh, to, to, to this whole fire, responding to the fire drills that we talked about. Um, and the final thing when it comes to technology is lack of threat intelligence. And because you don't have those three things that I talked about when it comes to technology, you don't have any threat intelligence. So actually you're not, lear not only are you not learning from the attacks that you're getting, um, it may be that other companies in your same um, industry are suffering the same attacks. So the information is out there, but actually you're not bringing that into your organization to learn from it and incorporate that into your own risk assessments. So that's really quick um, top 10 tips um, to improve uh, your chances of passing a security risk assessment. If you'd like to learn more about passing a risk assessment, then watch my next video on eight top tips to improve security.